Welcome to Nerdstalker, Episode 5. I am Adolfo Ferranda, at Nerdstalker on Twitter. And I'm Greg Valoria, Social Greg on Twitter. I guess I'm pointing this way yeah. today. Yeah, and that's you, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't I never know which way to point on these things. Oh, man. So I just got off a plane yesterday. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. So well, lots been going on. I, I, yeah, I think this was a busy week for you. Tell, tell us what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I was in Anaheim at Microsoft's Build Conference, and, uh, you know, they made a huge announcement, which I assume most of you out there have heard about uh, since then, uh, Windows 8. Ooh. Yeah, so nice. it, it was wild, man. Uh, a lot of amazing people there, over 5,000 developers there. Uh, it hmm. was at the Anaheim Convention Center. It was massive. It was massive. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, very different from like the smaller type of uh, conferences that I've been to uh, by Microsoft, for sure. I see. Uh, I see. But yeah. So give us some highlights. You know, what, what, Windows what 8, they, uh, huge, what was the first huge like? thing. Huge thing, you know. Nice. Um, a big keynote from Steven Sanofsky, you know, talking about oh, yeah. debuting Windows 8 and everyone saw the Metro UI. If you got a Windows Phone 7, then you're very familiar with what the Metro UI is and what it looks like essentially a series of tiles and some wonderful typography and some, you know, it's, it's kind of a beautiful type of thing, actually. And mm. um, what mm. they did is uh, they essentially rolled out one operating system for everything is a thing, right, for all, for all devices. So wow. um, at the event, they had their big Oprah moment where they gave, uh, well, what some people called a tablet. Now, I'm really reluctant to call this a tablet. Well, number one, I was really pissed off because I didn't get a tablet. <laughs> Turns out the media, oh, the press, got the tablet the day before uh, and had to return it the day before the end of the conference. Uh, but only huh? a certain list of media got that tablet, and I wasn't one of them. <laughs> so oh, I was, no. So I was pretty bummed out about that. But I did get my hands on one. Uh, luckily, uh, I have a way of finagling my way with some attendees and... <laughs> And oh, I seriously? Did, I did get to play with it a bit, and it yeah. was very interesting. Um, but let's talk about the, the you know, Windows 08 to, to start out with. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, yeah. What you're going to see and what you see now on the videos on the web and, and what we'll post and pictures and stuff like that is a preview. So that's not even, mm. that's not even beta that we're talking about here. That's not even, you know, release candidate or, or, or uh, you know, RTM, uh, release to manufacturers, and it certainly, it certainly isn't general availability. Uh, it's it's a preview, but the thing okay. is, is it's a working preview. I mean, they actually gave code out, and they gave this this it, what looks like a tablet, a Samsung. I'll call it a tablet for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. But everyone sort of changed their tune later and ended up calling it a computer, because this thing is it's a Samsung. It's just slightly larger than the iPad. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little thicker. It feels plasticky. You know, kind of cheap actually on the back. Mm. And uh, it's got a horrible battery life, uh, three hours if you're lucky. And um, it's a little laggy, you know, orientation stuff. There's, some, there's a little bit of lag. Um, there's a fan in this thing, <laughs> a fan. <laughs> in a tablet. Yeah, man. So like a you fan hear it. in a tablet. Yeah, it'll be in your room, you know, in your hotel room. And uh, you're sitting there quietly doing some stuff. And all of a sudden you hear this, and you're like, what the? It's this thing, this tablet thing, this Samsung Whoa. they give away. Um, and it comes with a keyboard, a docking station, actually. And uh, it's a really interesting piece of uh, machinery, you know. Uh, their, their contention is that, sure, this, you know, this is, seems really weird now, this, hard, this hardware. But in 12 months, um, this hardware will have caught up by then, right? It, it'll be sort of the de facto. People are going to have super, super powerful tablets, if you want to call them that, by that point. Perhaps tablet is mm. uh, a good thing to talk about in form factor, but in its ability, it's it's a full fledged computer. You know, it, it, you wow. can you can wow. hook it up to to monitors and and this in Windows 8 in particular on this tab tablet, if we want to call it that, it could uh, it supports multi monitor. Um, really? it's, it's very powerful uh, little little thing, and uh, Windows 8 is is incredibly optimized for it. Uh, and especially given that this is a preview, it's it's quite impressive uh, visually. Like I said, it's it's beautiful, man. 
What, what kind of interfaces do they have going to the outside world? You said they had video, uh, standard USB 2.0, or what, what did they have? Do you remember? Yeah, it, they had everything, man. It was like it was USB. <laughs> I believe they had actually they had uh, they showed a demo of USB 3.0. Oh, yeah, and, which yeah. was incredibly fast. Um, but but you know the hardware is sort of secondary in in the sense that we don't know what the manufacturers are all going to make in in twelve months. You know is so yeah sure. The, a, a lot of the rumors they didn't give us a delivery date of Windows Phone eight, the operating system. I'm mean, sorry, Windows eight, uh, the operating huh. system. So we just it, they gave us no date. So the press is just sort of like guessing by their sort of past uh, releases that it's going to be somewhere around uh, back to school time of next year. Um, so that could be really, the, you know, between the January and March range or something like that. You got you got to wonder about uh, Windows eight in that there's um, it's it's really nice in that the iPad you see your your apps right on the on the home screen on yeah, Windows eight yeah. they have this their Metro UI it's a series of tiles uh, some of the tiles are okay. um, sort of active so it could be your Twitter stream tile a Facebook tile and at, an email tile excuse me <clears throat> and as you get updates okay. these things will change you know the, the the text on the tile itself will change so it'll be oh, updated. nice social greg has has you know tweeted something uh real time yeah so it's, it's yeah in that sense it's really nice um but there's a lot going on in that you can get pretty deep into these apps um and, and swiping you know and and there's a, there's a whole lot going on so it's definitely a learning curve it's um right but it's um you know, it's it's awful pretty, I must say. And uh, if they get this thing, <laughs> this the hardware optimized and everything, and they get it smoothed out, and um, we'll we'll see what happens with it go forward. But um, there were there were some things like um, you know how you can alt tab on a PC and sort of see what applications you can bounce yeah, from application yeah, to application. Yeah, there yeah. is there is nothing like that on, in uh, Windows hmm. 8. So uh, on the okay. on the tablet. So in the tablet interface. Mm. Uh, I'm not quite sure. You can swipe actually to your previous application. So if you're okay. in like I don't know Twitter or Metro Twitter, whatever they call it on Windows 8, uh, and you had just been on email, you can swipe to the boom, and you're back to your e where you were on email, right? Uh, okay. Another really interesting thing that the way they're handling applications or apps, as they're calling them now, um, is that when you open an app, if you have any other apps open, they all automatically go into this sleep state. Right, so um, you, sw okay. you switch from Twitter to Facebook or something like that. Right. Suddenly, actually, that would be IE, but um, let's say another application, Office or something to IE. Yeah, yeah, sure, um, sure. You know, Office would go to sleep as, and then IE is up, and so this is to try to optimize battery life and that kind of thing too. Makes sense. Um, but it, it's really Makes quite sense. quick, and um, also, uh, let's see, uh, you're getting hardware acceleration out of the box in the software. So for developers, that's huge. They used to have to do all this kind of weird coding and stuff like that. But with Windows 8 for developers, uh, they mm. don't even have to think about that. It's 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 uh, sort of aware of what it's on, and then it will okay. uh, use this hardware acceleration to make the application and the and the you know everything faster. Your experience much faster. They inherit this mm -hmm. sort of from IE9, which which is sort of leveraging the same technology already. Um, so yeah, which is really cool. Wow, they've also That's made neat. a commitment to backwards compatibility. Actually, is what they said on the stage, right? So they're like, yeah, we're we're con committing. You know, they, Microsoft is infamous for this, right? For their commitment <laughs> to backwards compatibility, right? And sort of that's been sort of the anchor around their leg, and and why they think they had, you know, they've sort of lagged it quite a bit in uh, yeah. not keeping up with things like Apple or whatever, you know, because Apple can just, you know, they could cut the pass and say we're no longer supporting. Them. Our PC anymore, sure, right? Sure, but sure. for the enterprise, I mean, that's it's not really mm. an option. Right? Oh, they've committed to the ARM chipset now, so you know. Oh, it's, really? It's not just the Intel world anymore, which they do have backwards compatibility and on, but now they're catching up with the rest of the mobile world in jumping to ARM as well. So they're supporting wow. both now. The thing is, is and what everyone's saying in Microsoft, I believe they just admitted it today, is they're mm. they cannot. Uh, support backwards compatibility on ARM, right? Because that mean, that would mean a complete rewrite of all of their operating system applications, things like you know, the yes. touchpad. I mean, down to that level, you know, of everything. Oh my gosh, that would be a massive undertaking. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you know, on the tablet, also they included a preview of um, Internet Explorer 10, which was uh, really mm. interesting, um, incredibly fast. 
um, has zero Chrome around it. So you know how you have your like file edit and that kind of stuff on the browser sometimes. Your, yeah, yeah. Um, all this type of stuff, URL actually, um, address fields mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, it's not. It's just your web experience, which is really cool. Wow. Um, and um, it's clean. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to get your Chrome back, like you're, you obviously need an address, right, to type into. Yeah. Sometimes you want to go backwards and forwards because you do this like, right. swipe from right. the bottom, I believe, and then it comes up with your address field, and in the, in the top third is like some snapshots of uh, other browsers that have you been to that you've been to. Yeah, I eat ten already. The Man. thing is, is like what's amazing about all this too is that they're they're giving all of this to the developers. You know, on this tablet, not only were, was all this new application and stuff like that, right? But also right. the software, the development software. So they included things like the new Visual Studio Pre Preview Express, um, an, an Azure, which we'll talk about later, type of account. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. I want to hear about that. All these dev tools, all all kinds of um, you know out of the box templates and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so yeah, let's talk about Azure. So the thing is about these tablets and with Windows 8 specifically is it's going to be in a constant saving state. So no matter what you're doing, okay. it's always going to okay. be saving. That's the reason being really? is that, you know, sometimes you want to go back to the application and be where you were, like on, on your phone mm. or let's say Netflix, you want to go back to where you were in a particular movie or, or in a certain document you were typing or something like that. So there's this constant saving type of thing happening. So if you happen to be, I believe it's like a Windows Live or something like that type of um, um, subscriber or have an account or something like that, or I believe you automatically get one, everyone does, um, <clears throat> it will sync, you know, not only to your local machine, mm. but also to the cloud, you know, at the same time. Wow. So that That's means, nice. yeah, that means you can go from device to device and, uh, and you're there. Right, all over again. Your your account just sort of goes with you. So this is wow. sort of that that hybrid type of that's um, big. experience, you know. No, that's big. I mean, you know, I, I guess that would support having one really kind of bookmark list um, throughout your experience. Then I guess that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and and also with Azure and uh, or Windows Live or SkyDrive, you can be able to you know share files and do all this and that. So we'll see how that works out in terms of privacy and. Uh, what does that mean to Dropbox or iCloud and, and that kind of thing Ooh, as well, you know? Right, 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 right. Wow, that's cool. What so, else? What else? Well, they have something called, you know, TFS in the cloud now. So getting back to, like, the server development side of thing, TFS is essentially mm. um, <clears throat> their sort of like a collaborative development uh, application type of thing. So okay. you know, me and you are working on a particular piece of code. I'm checking out uh, some of the code that you've been working on so I can do it and then submit it again back up to the to the mm -hmm. you know to the cloud and, and so uh it's essentially it's sounding it's sounding like this is coming right at github you know mm. so so um it's sort of like you know they're they're adopting this whole uh development in the cloud thing obviously with azure and uh, they even have sql server in the cloud now and everything you know and it's it's quite yeah, fast Michael. Microsoft's a lot different nowadays. I, I, I was talking to some of the marketing managers at the startup weekend last weekend, and you know they, they won't really want to embrace the developing community again as well as getting people from outside inside again by offering these free tools. So yeah. I, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad they're doing that. I, I, I hope it is not too late, but it's good. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a, a complete different uh, a departure from like uh, Apple, right, who hides yes. everything to the last minute kind of and then they sort of spring it on you at wwdc but even then it's it's pretty late right um <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I don't know microsoft's doing this like a minimum of a year in advance and they're giving you know they're giving this away for you know for free actually they've um, yeah windows 8 yeah. dev is available for download now there's been over half a million downloads already i think in the first day or two or something like that that they offered it uh, which is insane wow all of these wow. uh, build videos are available online for free to view. So you can sit through um, every every single one of these sessions. Look at all these sessions. You know, that's just one day. Here's another day. I mean, this is goes. This is like four pages of this stuff. You know, on. Oh my gosh! You know, all, no wonder this. Uh, stuff. No wonder this podcast is dedicated to the build conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moly. there's a ton to cover. I mean, look at all that. You know? oh, oh my gosh! It's crazy. <laughs> nice. They also have uh, 
another huge thing. So like the foundation of uh, Windows 8 for developers is this thing called mm. WinRT. WinRT is right. a very Windows type of name. Okay. And uh, it's <laughs> yeah, essentially a platform sure. where um, you know languages can write on top of, right? So in the past, it's really been like uh, C Sharp and um, mm. C++ that can right. write, you know, and you can create these applications, VB and all this stuff. Um, but now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the three uh, languages that I heard from the, you know, I believe it was even Steve Ballmer made an appearance and, uh, you know, said, he said, uh, C Sharp, C, you know, C and JavaScript. Java? So, that, so that's wow. huge. Yeah, so this is huge. This is, and he said, this is a huge opportunity right now. And it is because it's all, it's all brand new. I mean, there's going to be some serious retraining of employees um, it's a good time to be a trainer, a Microsoft trainer. I'll put it like that right now, you know, because mm. um, and it's a good time to be a front end developer, as I've been, as we've been saying in the past here. You know, um, if you know HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, man, you, you have a lot of opportunity right now, and uh, you're going to be able to write native Windows applications now that not only run um, once you write them once on the uh, desktop but also the tablet and apparently uh, the phone to some extent. One of the really cool features that, you know, um, is difficult to do with the iPad is like sharing your data, right? So if, like files, right? Mm -hmm. Like remember printing right. and moving files has been kind of an issue. Right. Um, right. With, the, with Windows 8, it's going to be really easy. It's like a single piece of line of code and it's, it effectively tells uh, your, your application you can write and say, hey, uh, I'm an image, so uh, make me available to these, you know, to any application that um, supports that kind of thing. So that means Facebook images or, you know, Google oh, yeah. images or whatever has an API yeah. that, they, that, it can, that can call on that thing. So, you know, where it used to be all these different type of hacks and, and things like mm -hmm. that, um, mm -hmm. that's really, yeah. that's really nice. huge for developers. Nice, nice. Um, there's no more start menu. So this is a huge debate now uh, with all these uh, Microsoft what? Things. And all these Windows what? users, it's like the start menu has went away. How, how are we going to deal? You know, so it's it's a complete <laughs> departure here. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be interesting to see. Some people, ever some you know, the pundits or some people are saying, you know, hey, just move on. This is a, a brave new world now, and it really is. I mean, I have to commend Microsoft for going out on a limb and uh, completely, you know, saying throwing the past away to some extent, right? To a big extent, right. So yeah, I was at the uh, Build Blogger Bash, which uh, Paul Therott and Mary oh, Jo Foley no. um, put on, and it was really cool. Actually, the Windows Phone 7 guys did a live podcast from there, um, and huh. I met some really interesting people, one of which was a guy who worked, um, <clears throat> a Microsoft employee who told me effectively, and, and what I told him was, um, hey, you guys are doing a lot of like system area network type of stuff right out of the box, which they are, right? in the server side kind right. of this whole thing right uh, announcements and he's and and i'm like uh, it looks like you guys are you know sand commoditizing sand he's like yeah we are we are commoditizing it actually emc is on board because they see the writing on the wall um Ooh. these big companies are you know it, it is it's all going to be like totally commodity so that was very interesting it's an app store right so now they have oh. the, the windows app store so windows 8 will have an app store for all these apps right that are going to run sure. across the gamut right. on a tablet type or smaller sized computers and, and large computers whatever um okay the thing about this app store is that windows has decided to match apple's percentage so they're going to take 30 percent cut the same as apple so i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing you know what i mean uh it's not much of a distinction uh I was reading, I think, on Mac Rumors or something like that, where, like, oh, this is a, a potential threat to, to Apple. And, and if, I would think that if they wanted to be a threat, they would have, like, undercut that 30% price, you know. But Oh, yeah, do I know? down to 20 or something like that. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm not – so so is it is – it, is it, did you hear anything more about the Apple Store, you know, how they're going to run it or anything like that? Oh, or, the Windows Store, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they will have an approval process. It's gonna looks like it's gonna mm. be quite transparent. And mm -hmm. in, in the Apple process, you submit your uh, application, and you don't know if you've been accepted or rejected until you've been accepted or rejected. Exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> in, the, in the Windows experience, you're gonna have like a, it's sort of like your Amazon shopping cart, where it shows you on top where you are along okay. the shopping chain kind of process. So it'll oh, tell okay. you, you know, <clears throat> you're in this stage, you're in review, you're in approval, or whatever. You know, you're 
nice give a call back so I mean, no I, there is I, some I, transparency that's... they've they've attempted to to address that no that's an improvement i i, I think uh, you, you talk to any of the um uh app guys on the apple side you know they it, it goes into this black hole and just comes out as almost like a vending machine you put your coin in and you hope the coffee comes out or something like that you know so yeah it's interesting i'm glad they were able to show you the process along the way at least you know where you stand because i think one of the problems i find especially on my side where we're trying to um synchronize launching um apps into the market by marketing is that if you don't know when it comes through you kind of have an idea eventually but i mean it, it really is kind of kind of tough after a while you know okay i guess another week you know they have some more questions for <laughs> yeah. us and... yeah <laughs> so another really cool thing i got to do i got invited to um uh, a red carpet uh, lunch and dinner. The dinner was really, really interesting. Uh, there was only about oh, look at you! I don't know, tw- I know how lucky it was in this uh, hotel right next to Disneyland. You saw, we kept seeing the monorail go by. It was really bizarre. <laughs> um, and, but the you know it was one of those things where they give you everything you can drink and everything you can eat. Um, but it was really cool. Oh, there were like God. five. I think it was like on the future of sort of digital agencies, right? Um, and they were, mm. there was a panel of, uh, there was a company, Archetype, and a, a few other ones that were there. Uh, their CEOs were, mm. were there talking as we were like eating. It was quite odd. But right across from me was Ben Parr from Mashable, and next to him was Dwight Silverman. Oh, like, nice. The Houston Chronicle, I believe. I forget the name. Sorry, Dwight. Oh, nice. Um, and actually, Dwight said he, he might come on our show sometime, so that would be awesome. Um, you know, really? He's, he's often on Twitter, too. Bring him on. Ben was just on yeah. Twitter, too. And um, so I got yeah. to talk with those guys, and... Um, talk to these guys about sort of the, the how they see uh, this in their in their scheme of, of how they support clients and ad in ad, digital advertising digital game yeah 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 yeah. yeah 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 really interesting insight from one of the CEOs was that this whole support uh, his theory of uh, quite frankly of HTML and JavaScript is that there's just such a, a lack of uh, talent for C sharp and C plus plus type of engineers or hardcore engineers actually availability that they need to in effect you know, how he was kind of painting it uh, lower the bar right so they can get more people dumb it down a little bit I, well I wouldn't say that <laughs> because JavaScript you got to be pretty tricky I, I think it's, yeah 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 but, yeah, uh, yeah. but, but yeah it, 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 that was an interesting perspective I don't necessarily agree but it's a it's a very interesting Silverlight uh, is sort of their yes, sort of flash yes. equivalent. Um, it wasn't yeah. really brought up. Uh, they will support it. Um, like I said, they didn't really bring up uh, the language or anything like that. Um, hmm. So my, my question is to them is, and to young developers out there is, and so what's the, you know, the, the allure to, to you know, develop for, for Silverlight? Uh, if you don't see m- much of a future, we've got to remember our, you know, the, right. the WinRT is, you know, they're saying you know, all you need to know is JavaScript, right? Um, C Sharp or C. Right. Um, so why are you going to go messing around with XAML Silverlight is, is my question. Uh, go for it. Right. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see about that kind of, you know, the future of that. I just don't. I don't see a future really for it, so that's that's my take on it. But we'll but we'll see. Another thing that's come up too is that people were saying that uh, Windows 8 will not support Flash. That's not true. So in this release, <laughs> there's two versions of IE 10, I believe. There's an older version that supports sort of the shell, the old shell kind of thing, and then there's the IE 10 on the machine that supports ARM. So um, okay, okay, and, okay. And the thing about what they've released on this tablet that they gave away too is that it doesn't yet support sort of add-ins by uh, by design, you know. Um, so hmm. they don't want you adding in an ex- external type of stuff yet. Um, I see. Especially I for see. their sixty-four bit stuff, I believe. Um, mm. And mm. I believe the Flash version, sixty-four bit version, whatever, is still in uh, pre-development or something like that. But they are saying I that see. there it will be, you know, anything will be supported, just like uh, with previous Windows type things. So I think those uh, rumors are largely sort of, you know, played out. But uh, all in all, I have to say, you know, it was an intense conference. A ton. I mean, I'm leaving out a ton of information here. <laughs> I'll, post a, I'll post an image up on us of like a lot some of the stuff that that we've left out. It's, it's yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, put a put a link to the site and everything like yeah. that. I think there, were, there was a lot of stuff on the, on, on the actual um, 
Windows Windows board on just even the keynote addresses and everything. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll post that link up, and I think everyone can actually see exactly what went on. Yeah. So, Look, um, Greg, anything I'll, from the keynote addresses? You know what? What I will say, what I want to address also is that, um, you know, twelve months is a long time. So my question is, you know, with Windows eight, it looks very good for a preview. You know, very good. I mean, they handed out code. You know, usually this kind of stuff is vaporware mm. or some type of red herring, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just you know BS essentially. But uh, we have uh, <laughs> we have code to play with. We have a device. Oh, some developers have a device to play with. Uh, this code you can do emulation, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's as if you have the devices or whatever, um, and it looks nice. It looks really good. I mean, it's a. I think it's definitely a contender. Now the question is, uh, by the time it's released, even twelve months, mm -hmm. <clears throat> will Android, will Apple have an answer? Will you know to this? Because um, yes, yes, yeah, they're pretty fast. You know, we'll see. Yeah. I, I don't see Apple making huge changes, you know, like this. I mean, this yeah. is like an exciting type of change. Android, I'm hearing yeah. huge things about ice cream sandwich. I hear it's going to be a substantial, substantial um, improvement on top of, of everything. Wow. Well, I, I mean, I, I just, I think I just saw some data that, um, you know, Android now has, has leaped ahead in terms of market share. So, you know, they need to support that and need to advance it as fast as possible. And with these things we talked about last week with those Chinese developers taking the best of Android yeah. out and make their own OS, yeah. you know, it's going to be kind of interesting, I think, right? Well, we got the, well, we got the iPhone 5 coming out uh, October, yes. I believe, is what I'm, the rumors were saying, right? Yeah, I, I talked to the Apple Store guy. They were saying, yeah, you know, look about mid -up. There's going to be some interesting news coming. Out. Okay, yeah. that's, that'll be good. And then uh, <laughs> we have, you know, iPad 3 rumors, and who knows right. when that's going to come. Right. Um, we have 4, 4G phones uh, beginning to roll out. Um, right. Yeah, so we shall see. <laughs> but I have to yeah, say, yeah. Um, you know, I thought Microsoft was out of this race, and... Uh, this is their, I, you know, I'm calling this their Hail Mary pass, really. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a heck of a throw. <laughs> Why will new developers coming out of school also look at, um, you know, what is it, whatever, the huge percentage of Apple, the huge percent of, percentage of Android, and the sliver right. of Microsoft and say, you know what, I'm going to develop for Microsoft, you know. So that's that's going to be an uphill Ooh. battle, I believe. Challenge, yeah, a major challenge. I mean, I think we were talking about what was it last week or the previous podcast or yeah, something like that about you know the the market share that that was predicted by IDC and Gardner about you know yeah. um, you know you know Windows uh, Windows is going to be far ahead of uh, Apple or something like that for market share or ahead mm -hmm. of Apple mm -hmm. for market share. So it's looking like, wow, okay, yeah. bring it on, I yeah. guess. Yeah. It will be interesting. Lots of questions. We'll see how this thing plays out. Um, like I said, there's lots of stages for this thing before it even it even goes live. I mean, this is a preview, so I believe the next is, step is uh, beta, and then they go release candidate, and then they go something called RTM, which is release to manufacturers, and then they go GA, which I is see. general availability. So there's a, quite a few steps. Wow. So, Greg, uh, what's what's the next story? Oh, well, I was invited to the AMD Fusion chipset relaunch party. Cool. Which is, I've never been to a relaunch party. Launch relaunch. parties I have, but, but <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. They, I thought they launched this chipset in February, so <laughs> that's why. I guess that's why they're calling it the relaunch party. But actually, oh. what, what they announced is that the AMD has the world's fastest processor in the world at 8.429 gigahertz and um the person wow. from guinness world book of records uh, presented them with their with their plaque that uh signifies that and wow. I, it was, it was, it was, I thought that was kind of cool but uh the funny thing about it with this fusion chipset you know it's supposed to go into a lot of devices um it's supposed to um uh, uh, marry uh, a really the st traditional processor with a graphics processor, so it's kind of challenging NVIDIA and a couple of other people like that. Yeah. Uh, so, so the funny thing about it was is that all the hardware they had displaying these AMD Fusion chips were HP. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, I'm like, 
dude, you know, Isn't I mean, that a did you get the company? memo? <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> yeah, did you get the memo? <laughs> you know, so, so wow. I, I'm like, I, I had to ask the marketing people, okay, of come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me what's going on here. Well, yeah. you know, we couldn't get any hardware, but, you know, go to that TV over there, which is made in Korea. Oh man, <laughs> and, wow. and uh, that's gonna be in that chipset, and and the Taiwanese, <laughs> you know, oh Acer, you know. Yeah. So, it, but it, it was it was interesting. I mean, basically, it was their first um, step towards really marrying um, graphics and 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 the actual processor, and it, it, it runs on like eight watts. It's wow. pretty low power, man. So yeah. so it's 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 tablet ready whenever they could get it off of that HP tablet that isn't gonna be launched anymore wow. but but anyway but anyway i thought that was the most interesting thing i thought about it. i was like i you know a bunch of the journalists around me were like going like you know wow. what's going on that's here? ironic you know? yeah so, yeah it is pretty ironic i mean we were talking about this two weeks ago on our podcast right so yeah. uh, about the hp thing so that, i thought that was kind of a funny takeaway from this week for me <laughs> so so anyway hey um there's some events coming up, so tell us about FailCon again. That's right, FailCon. So it's at thefailcon.com. It's uh, October 24th, 2011 at the Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco. FailCon's a one-day conference for technology entrepreneurs, investors, developers, and designers to study their own and others' failures and prepare for success. Uh, Greg, what else do we got going on? Another event? Well, I think we got SF New Tech on uh, September 28th. Um, Miles just launched that this week. So um, basically, it's going to be innovations in commerce, which is really cool. You'll have PayPal, eBay, um, many others, uh, Trustee, um, oh, cool. which is a you know, validation one. Wow. Um, I think there will be even a Japanese app, JGrab. So uh, it will be kind of neat, Nothing, everything to do with commerce. So wow. um, it, that was another great themed event by uh, SF New Tech and Miles. So. Catch them at Mighty 119 Utah on uh, September 28th. It's available on Eventbrite right now, so you know, grab your tickets. There's some discount tickets still available, so just go online and, and look for that. Um, there was an email sent out this week from Miles, so if you're on their email distribution list, you'll see all the discount codes and see what's left. So um, right. you're going to be there, right? Uh, I'm going to be right. there. Um, so we'll be cool. doing the Ustream. Come by and say hello to both of us. Um, well. Um, you'll be doing interviews. I'll be doing you streams, so that'll be pretty good. <laughs> cool. So where do we uh, contact uh, you, Greg? Hey, contact me at Social Greg on Twitter and at uh, socialgregsf at gmail dot com. And and also, oh. get on the the NRDSTK hashtag. We oh, want to yes. hear from you guys. <laughs> Yes, yes. Tell us about what you want to see on this podcast, and we'll put it on. And actually, I want to take a take some time to do like a a shout out to my friend Megumi in Fukuoka. So wow. Hey. Hey, thanks. Thanks man. for helping me out this week. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, very cool. <laughs> All right. So I'm Adolfo. You can reach see find me at at NerdStalker on Twitter, and you can reach me at Adolfo at NerdStalker.com. You can catch our show on iTunes on the audio and video version. And you can see us at nerdstalker.com, or you can see us at nerdstalker.mevio.com on the Mevio network. Nice. Nice. Right on, Greg. All right, so, pal. Hey, man, catch you next week. Yeah, catch you next week. See you later. Okay, see you guys. <laughs>